In this video, we're going to tie a little pattern called the Pueblo Emerger. First thing we're going to do is start at the midpoint of the shank of the hook with some 12 aught or 8 aught olive thread. I'm using Vivas thread. Uh, 8 aught uni also works fine for this pattern. The first material we're going to tie in is going to be some olive antron fibers or xelon fibers. I like to use the Zelon fibers. We're going to take about eight or so of them, anywhere from six to ten fibers. So we'll use about eight or so in this pattern. Then we're going to take a wrap here and we're going to tie it in at the midpoint. And I'm going to wrap down the body or shank of the hook nice and even all the way to the bend. And I'm just going to take my thread and advance it back forward to about the two thirds point of the hook. The next material we're going to use is some orange midge tubing. And I'm just going to tie that in by the tip of the midge tubing. I'm going to do a couple more tight wraps and I'm actually going to pull and stretch the tubing as I tie it in. I'm pulling pretty hard. I've stretched it about three four inches. I'm just stretching it as I'm tying it in. Once I get to the back of the tail there, I'm just going to take my thread, wrap it back forward nice and even. You want to do nice, smooth, even wraps. And then you can unstretch the tubing. And then we're going to pull it forward a little bit here, perpendicular to the fly, and I'm going to wrap that tubing. I'm pulling and stretching as I'm wrapping as well. Nice, even wraps as I stretch. Then once I get to the two-thirds point up the shank of the hook, I can capture that midge tubing, lay a couple wraps in front and behind just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Then I stretch the tubing as I trim it. That'll suck the tag end of the tubing back down into the fly there. Then I'm going to trim my tail. I like to trim my tail about the length of the tubing body, which is about two-thirds or so the length of the shank of the hook maybe err on the side of shorter when in doubt. Then I'm going to take some more of that Zelon or Antron fiber in olive. This time I'm going to use a little bit more of a bulky clump. I'd say about 30 or so fibers. I'd say about four times the amount that we used on the tail. Then I'm just going to take my thread back to that two-thirds point. I'm going to tie in a clump of that Zelon or Antron. I'm going to let it hang off kind of the back. I'm just going to build up a little bit of a base here for my body. And I want to make sure that I don't go too far back. I want to build a little thorax body only about a third of the front of the hook there. And I'm going to use some gray olive super fine dubbing. And the goal here is to make a nice little round compact ball right up here by the thorax. So I just dub that super fine dubbing onto my thread here and I dub it fairly sparse. I don't want to put on too much at one time so I just take my dubbing I'm just going to kind of almost make these kind of X wraps here to kind of build a nice round dubbing ball. Here we are. Once you have your dubbing ball built, I'm going to take my thread to just in front of it, and then I'm going to pull all that Zelon, pull it right over the top of that dubbing ball with a couple of wraps, and I'll make a couple wraps right in front of it just to secure it. I like this fly 
to be nice and durable. So I used maybe a couple extra wraps that some of the other guys would do, but they're well-placed wraps. Then you can trim that Zelon or Antron out of the way. Then I'm going to take one more wrap. I'm going to put it right kind of up against my thorax there. And now we're ready for the legs. For that, I'm going to use a partridge feather. So I'm going to take a little partridge feather here, pluck one from the patch. There we go. And I'm going to strip off all the under fluff. Just exposing the tip of the feather there. Then I'm going to take my scissors. I'm actually going to trim out a little notch right out of the tip. And you'll end up with a little notch just like that. Now I'm going to take this feather here And I'm going to slide it into place over the head of the fly. Let me turn my vise here so I can kind of show you. So ideally all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in kind of like that. And I want these legs to hang back about halfway down the body. I'm going to lay them where I want them to be and I'm just going to take my fingers I'm going to pinch that feather in nice and tight. Sometimes I can wet my fingers to kind of keep all the fibers together. That'll help me kind of pinch them into place. And I pinch fairly hard, nice and tight. Um, that way they don't come loose with my first wrap of thread. So I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to do a nice loose first wrap. Then you can kind of inspect how your legs sit. You can adjust them a little bit if you need to. And if you don't like it, you can just undo it real quick straighten out your feathers again and we can try again. That first wrap is one you don't have to commit to. You can always back it off. And sometimes you'll get a feather that fights you. This one's fighting me a little bit and it's kind of crooked. So let's try one that's a little more straight. Sometimes when you get a cro crooked feather one side is kind of longer than the other. And we'll just do the same thing over again. This one looks a little bit straighter. Still not perfectly straight though, but it's pretty close. So we'll just lay it in. Pinch nice and tight. And I'll do a nice loose wrap to first capture that leg. And you can actually, if they're tied in a little too long, you can just pull it ever so slightly. That'll help even them out. Now I'm going to take my thread here and I'm going to lay a nice tight wrap right up against the casing or the thorax. And that'll help flare those legs out there. Then I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to take one wrap right behind the eye and I'm going to pull pretty tight and then I'm just going to take my stem feather and you got to keep your thread tight as you do this. So I'm kind of pulling nice and tight. Take the stem I can just pull tight with my thread and pull the stem out of there. The trick is to pull nice and tight with your thread and I can lay one wrap there to clean it up and I'm ready to whip finish. You don't have to use that little trick at the end if you feel safer using your scissors. You can trim it out of there with your scissors. And you can kind of puff your legs up a little bit. And that is essentially the little 
Pueblo merger. It's a great little betas pattern. That's all there is to it.